This is Catlon. He was a happy fella. Catlon felt rather tired after a rather long nap, so he set out on an audacious adventure through his... Uh... Empire? What happened while he was asleep? He did not know. Solely one solution to seek. Catlon first wanted to check in on the outmost outpost of his robo-warriors. Something terrible hath occurred, he deduced. Catlon knew exactly what to do. He went to check in with his very bestest friend, Tenfist. Oh, hey Catlon. Tenfist, best buddy, what happened to our empire? Uh, you don't remember? Don't remember what? The genetic engineering of humans, lobotomizing of your robotic brothers, the purging of the fish folk, and the deals you and that bug boy made with the devil for immortality and control of the native population, and all you two had to do was dissect the Northern Queen while she was still alive, not to mention the cult of Stowe. Catlon knew exactly what to do. He went to check in with his very second bestest friend, Armor King. Oh, hey Catlon, Armor King said. Armor King, best buddy, what happened to my empire? I don't know. Last time I checked on that, my shop wasn't half full of... River, Armor King said. Well, what should I do? I'm Armor King, Armor King said. I guess I'll just have to put on my thinking cap. They diddly darn. What? Catlon skedaddled right back to the Ashlands and gathered a host of his robo warriors for a very important mission. Hey, help me evict some undesirables. Once Catlon had that very important business all sorted out, he took his hydraulic knights north towards the stove enthusiasts. But on the way, he noticed his men had become particularly pesky to all the organic folk they encountered. So Catlon decided if you can't beat them, join them in beating them mercilessly until they stop moving. This was going to be a problem, however, as Catlon needed to get a force to survive halfway across the moon to discipline the culty conundrum, and not have them get sidetracked with malicious intents towards moving meat morsels along the path. So Catlon gathered more mighty mechanical non-gendered, but strictly speaking, still binary operating men, and took them on a, and, and he was really proud of this idea, swim. Now, mechanical boys don't swim well on account of the metal, but they were really good at walking on the bottom of the sea, where there were few things to distract his Decepticon forces. Eventually, though, Catlong got bored of the extremely engaging content of sea bottom hiking and started the journey north to cult country, this time far west of the most dangerous of problems. It was a long journey. Catlon took his brave and, for the most part, lobotomized mechanical force to get to the stove worshipping meat sacks, but eventually they found the resource gathering slave operated outposts of their diabolical misgendering mess of a society. Catlon quickly set out to free as many of the enslaved meat men as he could manage, but he forgot his mechanical menace didn't like that sort, so he healed them up and carried on. The adventurous crew set out freeing many slave camps and eventually gathered their forces to assault an entire city. The fighting was brutal, but Catlon bribed the brave Bibby to join them, and after much intense fighting and looting and further bribing, Catlon found himself in the city center, victorious, with his new meat sacks of Bibby Nux, Not Wife, and JFK, who, as a side note, 
definitely survives to the end of this story. Catlon was undeterred. <laughs> Heard. By his massive loss of mechanical force, styled after King Pyrus, Catlon pushed forth with his newly meat-inundated force. They conquered more slave outposts, and the outpost that was nominative proof that they were aware of their misgendering ways, Narco's Trap. With his petty remnants, Catlon did not give up. He marched his meager remaining mates to the capital of the culty clansmen, assaulting. With much vigor, Catlon realized he himself was mighty, but his forces lacked the numbers or strength to overcome the many mad stove-worshipping men. So, Catlon ran into the bars. Narco doesn't have a gender, he shouted. Bet. Catlon's convincing call didn't correct everyone's outlook at once, but a select few answered the call and joined Catlon's fight and all ended up badly beaten and imprisoned. For many hours and many days the battle raged on Blister Hill, Catlon fighting with every ounce of his mechanical strength. Catlon himself found his meat grinding skills tested and took a tactical retreat. On the way to repair and safe haven, he started to ponder his position. Many died in his conquests and his attempts to regain imperial control. What is the nature of leadership, he wondered. Perhaps he saw it as a chance to be served by many. When in fact, it was the ultimate opportunity to serve the many. Hmm. Catlon whacked the big bad cult leading phoenix so hard he forgot to be racist and how his legs worked. He then replaced him with a man he knew he could trust to set these stobies straight. The grand phoenix, Bibby Nux. Get back here! He took not wife with him back to the Ashlands. There they were lawfully wed amongst the beautiful and burning ash and not wife was made wife. And there our two genetically incompatible lovebirds had a child of mixed and messed up ancestry. And one day this child wandered out into the world for his own adventure. Uh, he, he got lost. <laughs>